Greetings viewers and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be doing some quick generator repair board work here, specifically these uh, bridge rectifier assemblies that are normally found on a lot of the PowerMate generators. And this is for a fellow YouTuber by the name of James Condon. You can check out his channel in the description and down below. And he really has an extensive library on generator rep repair. And I was uh, asked to see if I can go and repair these boards for him. He was working on a project and he found out that these boards were not going to, weren't working. Specifically this one, you could see on the here that the capacitor has started to bulge out a little bit. And not sure how old this bridge rectifier assembly is. It's probably an original one from probably about eight, ten years ago, I'm going to say. It is the part number 0063525. So what we're going to do with these boards is we're going to replace the worn out electrolytic capacitors that are on these boards. Now the original one here, you can see that the capacitor is a lot shorter. It's a little bit fatter. It's also rated for 470 microfarads and 200 volts. Here is an aftermarket version that he also sent. And it's got a slightly different part number here, but it re references the original on the back. But as you can see, this capacitor is far taller. It's a different value, 390 microfarads and 250 volts. But James was telling me, and I've, and I've run into this issue too, is that this capacitor is too tall to fit inside the plastic cover on the end of the generator. So this really isn't the right size capacitor physically to fit in that space. And then also it being a slightly different value, when you have the engine running at its proper speed, you're also going to get a different output voltage. I'm going to stick with the original value of 470 microfarads. And what we're going to do is I've already picked up the new capacitors here and there are Nikolons. And the part number here is right here. You can go and check that out on Mauser. I'll put the link in the description below. And all we're going to do is swap it out. In order to get this repair done, it's a two-step process. We need to remove the, the component first by desoldering the solder pins there. And then finally, we need to heat up the glue with the SMD hot air rework station to release the glue that is holding the component over on the PCB. For tools, I'm using a Hako 808 desoldering gun. It's got a built-in vacuum and the tip basically just gets hot like a soldering iron. And once you touch it to the solder pad and the solder gets molten, you press the trigger here and it will vacuum away all that solder, making it a very nice and clean solder pad to go and remove the component. The next thing is to heat up the silicone glue here. And I usually set my hot air to about 350 degrees, 345 degrees, and evenly heating it up around the edges here it should release that and I've already done the first one to show you and I'll show the other one on camera and that's how the component is removed. After that, it's just a matter of replacing it with the new capacitor, which I have here. It's the same physical size as the OEM part and we're gonna put it on both of these. The part number that I use is in the description, but just to show you, we're gonna be using 470 microfarads, 200 volts and it's rated up to 105 C. Now these are some pretty fancy tools. You don't necessarily need them to complete this job. A standard soldering pencil iron or a soldering gun and a, a heat gun, for example, would be able to get the same results. It'll just take a little bit more time. You need to be careful that you don't heat up the boards too much. Uh, this glue is designed to last uh, for a very long time, but a little bit of heat will make it brittle and then you can start scraping it away, which is the next thing that I have to do. And for those that are interested, if you have one of these diodes that have blown out, it's pretty easy to test them, put with your multimeter set to diode. These are RL205-T switching diode types. They're very similar to a 1N4007, and that would probably get the job done as well. But that is the original part that is on both of these boards. So if you have one of these diodes that's popped or burnt out, uh, the same process goes. These are not held down by glue. You can just use a desoldering gun in order to remove these safely and you can replace them like that. 
When we reinstall the capacitors, we need to be mindful of the polarity. You can see the negative mark here, and that is where it needs to go in this orientation. This is your negative brush terminal here. We cannot install it this way, because if, it, if we do, then as soon as you connect this to the generator, this capacitor would blow. So we want to make sure that it's the correct polarity. A quick word on the adhesive. We want to make sure we use a neutral curing silicone adhesive. Uh, and neutral curing meaning that it does not release acetic acid as it's curing. Acetic acid is actually damaging to the PCB traces. And we want to make sure we use a neutral curing meaning that, it, meaning that it won't release that acetic acid. It basically smells like vinegar once it's drying. Kind of think like your window and door caulk that you get at Home Depot, for example. That's a silicone based uh, with the acetic acid there. It's actually used as a, an accelerant to cure the adhesive and sealant to your window or door in a much quicker fashion. But acetic acid is usually not that big of a deal to most woods and plastics. But for PCBs, that is actually very detrimental. You don't want that. And you can see how it changes color. This used to be like a white color, but it starts to turn to a brown uh, and it just wears out over time, but it's supposed to last a very long time. I've heard as much as 20 years uh, if it's under the right conditions. Sometimes it may not last that long, and I don't think these boards were ever expected to last beyond 10 years, but it's easy enough that if we use the right adhesive, then we should be okay. Finally, the adhesive that is not an adhesive should never be used for this kind of application, although I see it very commonly on a lot of PCB repairs. You do not want to use the hot glue gun or the hot glue stick that you find at the hobby store. And because it is not actually a sealant or an adhesive at all, it's actually a thermoplastic. Over time, that glue gets very hard, very brittle, and it doesn't stick to anything anymore. You don't want to use something like that where you're going to be in a vibrating environment like on a generator because that will... While it's a short-term solution, I'll give it that, it is not a good long-term solution and you will wind up having problems later on down the road. So I've seen it done before. Do not use a hot glue gun stick to make this repair when securing components to a PCB. Now that we have the tripod set up here, what we're basically going to do, I'm doing this in reverse. But what we're going to do is that we're just going to heat this up using the hot air reworks station and it doesn't need to be heated up for too long we just want to release this glue from the PCB to where it's brittle enough to where you can actually start to scrape it away with a knife or an exacto knife or a chisel of some sort without damaging the board here and right now I just got my hot air rework set to 35% airflow and exactly 356 degrees Fahrenheit. That's a little low. I would probably go a little bit faster at maybe say 400, 450, but I don't want to take a chance in ruining this. So we'll just take our time and release this glue. And here I'm just evenly heating it up, keeping it maybe about an inch away. And I know that within a about a minute or so of doing this, then it should be pretty easy to scrape this off. Yeah, see it's coming right off. Of course I don't want to touch it because it's going to be pretty hot here. Oh, that's not too bad. Great. So that's how you remove this glue. And again, it's pretty pliable when it's heated up, but it's usually a little bit harder when it's dry and at normal temperature but this is what prevents it from vibrating off of the board here all right here we have the hako 808 and it's heating up right now but basically once this tip is heated up and i can 
get that solder point to be molten, I can actually vacuum away the solder. Just wanted to show you guys how I do this. Now, I have to look past the camera, and I do apologize if this doesn't come through too well. But all we're going to do here is heat this up. And when it becomes molten, then I'll press the trigger. And it will vacuum away all that solder. Now some solders may need to be heated up a little bit hotter. In this case, I'm going to be replacing it with their standard 6040 solder. And some of the lead-free solders or silver bearing solders for example will actually be need will need to be heated up even hotter and as you can see it's starting to flow and i think it's pretty hot there i didn't get it all so that gives you guys an idea well if i can try to focus on it here Maybe not as easy. There you go. Makes things nice and clean. Now we'll do it for the other solder pad. And then we'll work on getting the glue released. Here's the capacitor removed. Uh, it took a little bit of the capacitor itself with it, but it's not a big deal. It looks like it's just the labeling on it. And that's all that's left. So it turns out that this adhesive had to be heated up a little bit more. This is the newer aftermarket one. I went 425 degrees Fahrenheit before it finally started to release, and it actually turned out pretty good. Now here's the reassembly with the new capacitor. And as I had mentioned before, this is polarized. We need to make sure we get the polarity correct. This is the negative side. And on this particular board, you see the positive mark. That means that the negative band needs to go on the other side. And it should fit right in place, like so. What we'll do is get that flush. And then what we'll do is we'll heat up some solder and get those secured in. Now for resoldering this, I'm not going too fancy, just using a standard Weller soldering gun and some 6040 solder. Actually, it's upside down. It's what I use for most of my SMD stuff. I'll just have to use quite a bit of it. And what the important thing here is to make sure there's more than enough solder on here to make sure that it spreads the current out. And there you go. Actually, probably should go add a little bit more solder here. Just to make sure that pad is thoroughly covered. It's okay if you have a little extra solder there. I like that much better. Now this should be functional, ready to go. But now we're going to put the silicone adhesive on there. And that's going to take a little bit to dry, but once that's done, this board will be ready to install back in the generator. I'm going to end the video here. Now that the capacitors are installed, I still need to put on the silicone adhesive. You just need a little bit around the edges here just to make sure that it doesn't vibrate off. Most of the time, your solder pads, are these are pretty hefty. That should be more than ample enough to hold that in place, but we'll just put the adhesive glue on there for good measure. 
and I'll get these back over to James and he should have some good working generator boards for his next repair video. If you like what you see, please subscribe to the channel and if there's any questions, please leave a comment in the description below. All the tools that I've used I will be linked in the description below. Till the next video guys, thanks for watching.